Welcome to our pause to pray. In this season after Pentecost, when we celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit to God's people, we are looking at the fruits of the Spirit. This week, the theme is faithfulness, and we start with Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the council of the Holy Ones, great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord, God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I've sometimes wondered whether St Paul puts his list of the fruits of the Spirit in a deliberate order, or just jotted them down as they occurred to him. Given the emphasis he places on love throughout his letters, I'm not surprised that that comes at the beginning. But as for the rest? The more I think about it, the more I begin to understand how all the fruits are connected and interdependent. Each one needs the others, and each one enriches the others. Generosity without faithfulness, for example, may become nothing more than a passing whim. While if faithfulness is not infused with a leaven of generosity, it's in danger of turning sour, rigid, life-denying. Behind, above, below them all is the Holy Spirit. Fiery and energising, as experienced by the disciples at Pentecost, or gentle and quiet, like the still small voice heard by Elijah. No wonder the fruits of the Spirit are so varied. Faithfulness might seem to be one of the quieter virtues on our list. Yet our vision as a parish is to be faithful. Faithful, engaging, hospitable. In Holy Trinity and St Mary's, through teaching, listening, working and praying together, helping each other, understanding and forgiving our faults and failures, we learn to be people of faith and to be faithful in our lives. But one aspect of leading a faithful life, which I certainly find difficult, is being prepared, as Psalm 89 says, to proclaim God's faithfulness to all generations, to the world beyond our nice, safe church walls. I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking that that's definitely a step too far. I get grumpy and cross and discouraged far too often, and I know that I'm not, and never will be, patient enough, kind enough, faithful enough. How can I possibly go around proclaiming things by word and example? But if I have the humility to step back, to remove myself and my ego from centre stage, I realise that it's not me who produces those fruits, any more than it's me who causes my tomatoes to ripen and grow. It's entirely the work of the Holy Spirit. Just as all I have to do to the tomatoes is to water them and feed them, so all I have to do, if I'm to show forth the steadfast love of God, is to keep listening with a humble, open heart and mind, 
then all the rest will follow. Amen. A poem of St Seraphim of Sarov, an 18th century Russian saint. When you pray, be like the mountain in stillness, in silence, thoughts rooted in eternity. Do nothing, just sit, just be, and you will harvest the fruit of your prayer. When you pray, be like the ocean with stillness in its depths, the waves ebbing and flowing. Have calm in your heart, and evil thoughts will flee of their own accord. When you pray, remember the breath that made us living beings. From God it comes, to God it returns. Blend the word and prayer with the flow of your life, and nothing will come between you and the giver of life. And now, trusting in God's faithfulness, as our Saviour taught us, let us say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.